Hello everyone and welcome back to .NET Core Central. Today I'm going to talk about a feature that is available in Coravel which is called queuing. Coravel is a NuGet package which I discussed in my last video which is mainly used for scheduling tasks and this is a program that I built last time where we can schedule tasks using different configuration and it's extremely easy to use. Today, I'm going to talk about how we can use queuing in Coraval. Now, this queue is essentially just for scheduling tasks through a queue. So, this is the queuing feature that is provided by Coraval is useful for mainly offloading tasks into a background thread. So, in my opinion, whatever the queuing supports, um, some of it or the base part of it can be done through task or task parallel library in .NET, but some features can be handy, especially if you want to look into some stats and things of that nature. Now I'm going to start with very basic example where I'm going to attach the queue. So for that, what we can do is we can do builder dot services dot add add queue and this is part of the Coraval namespace so I'll just add using Coraval. This is going to add a queue service of Coraval. Now next what I'm going to do is this is the out of box weather feature weather forecast API that comes by default with the .NET. I'm just going to use it. I'm not going to create anything new. So here I can inject an IQ. And IQ is part of the Coravel.queuing.interfaces. And here I can say Q. Now once we created the queue, we can do a queue and then we can do uh, here we can say queue task now there are multiple ways of doing queue now the first way of doing is using a queue async task this is essentially just you are queuing an asynchronous task but let me show it so I'll just use the code they're suggesting and this is simple hello from queue and now let's run this application and once we run this application we can see the swagger page here and this is the console where it's running I'll go ahead try it out and execute after I execute it takes a moment because you know it is uh, asynchronous queuing it should show up this print statement here because it's waiting for five seconds uh, it'll take some time but here here we see that hello from the queue the code that we wrote here so that's one way of configuring in line the other way of doing it is through queue invocable and when we do queue invocable of course we have to implement an i invocable class so we can do something like this, print invocable. Let's go ahead and create a print invocable class. And print invocable is implementing I invocable, which is part of Coraval.invocable namespace. So I just added it. So now we created a print invocable, which implements the invoke, in which it's just you know, printing out this. So it's very similar. Now what we have done is on execution, we are queuing a task but we are queuing it part of a different class so this class can be externalized and can do a bunch of things and it can run in the background so i have not added the print invocable to the dependency injection so let's me go ahead and add builder dot services dot add transient and here i can say Print invocable 
and that's all I have to do and now let's run this again we are here so let's go and try to execute this and after we execute it should show up that printout in a second here we see hello Coracle queue as I mentioned it takes a little bit of time because it queues it and it picks it up from the queue and prints it but it took a little bit of time but it printed out hello Coracle queue from here now we can of course use dependency injection in this class also so we can create a constructor and then here we can create something called internal interface iPrinter and then we can create a class which implements the print and here we don't even need to do it here but we can just go ahead and I printer printer and here just call printer dot print and add task dot delay again so if we do that we of course have to add the printer to the dependency injection uh, we did that so now let's run it and once we run this now also we should see the same response but through a different interface so this is the new let's go try execute and as you can see this is nothing printed here execute and it's going to take a couple of seconds and then it should print out the statement which is here hello global queue and we can see it showed up at a, a low coral queue. Now, for the queue, one thing is we might want to pass on some payload. So that is also possible. So there is a method which is queue invocable with payload. And for payload, we can say it's a string because we just care about maybe just the string payload. And of course, we'll have to pass the string value here. So we can say hello from the color. Next, we have to go and update the print invocable method. So print invocable, apart from implementing I invocable, it also have to implement I invocable with payload. And for the payload, we are going to have a string. And then we will implement this interface, which will have a payload as a property. And just going to have get and set here. And we can pass the payload to the print method. And we'll update here the print method to a string. And here we can just let's just do a pass payload. So this shows how we can pass on a payload to the queue invocable queue, and we just have to use the queue invocable with payload, pass the type of the payload, pass the payload itself and then go and update our class and add a new interface called I invocable with payload, which gives this property payload based on whatever type we define. And so here I am using string, but it can be any other type. And then we can call the invoke passing the payload and print it out here. So let me run this. And if I run this this time, I should see the extra string after the hello coracle appearing. So go ahead, execute. And once this is executed, we should see the extra string appearing. 
we can see here hello coral q payload from the color as expected so this is one of the other feature that we can use for uh, payload purposes now there is another thing which it supports which can be handy is the concept of metric so if we go here and we just do q dot get metrics and we just print out the metrics let's get the running count again i'm just using plain simple plus for the string concatenation but this is not suggested for the simplicity of this example i just did that so let me print this out also the matrix of the current queue and as you can see this can be handy to understand at any given point in time how many queues are running in the background and whatnot so let's run this let's go here let's try it out execute and once we execute we can see there is one there's no running queue because it's not running yet as we can see it's waiting and one pending queue because we had the running queue first and waiting at the second so we can see one waiting and zero right running and the waiting queue is executed now now if we would have got the matrix and printed it again it would show zero zero after the execution so that is all I wanted to cover for today's video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you are new to this channel, and if you think you are getting value out of this channel, please subscribe to the channel. And thanks so much for watching this video.